Heed my words. I am Melania, Blade of Mikola. And I have never known defeat. Welcome back, you stinky little tarnished. It's been a while. How long's it been? Too long. Today, I'm very excited to take on one of the hardest bosses I've ever come up against, the goddess of rot herself, Melania, Blade of Mikola. And we're gonna be taking these freshly printed, unpainted pieces and turning it into this final product. So pop your jars on your head as we jump right in. And engage in jolly cooperation. Corpse after corpse left in my wake. So I've printed this model in separate bits, the wings, the sword arm, the body and the base all need to be attached, which I'll do with some super duper glue. This is another excellent STL design by the guys over at Zed Kino, who previously did the Nameless King and the Dancer of the Boreal Valley models that I've printed before. So be sure to check the link in the description to check out the model if you want to print one for yourself. So with it glued, it's time to equip some gloves and I'm just going to be using some of this Millie Putt, which is some epoxy putty. It is best to wear gloves when handling any stuff like this because it can cause skin irritation at times. So I'm just breaking off two bits of each of these putties and mixing them together with some water to activate it. Then with a little sculpting tool, I'll just start shaping out these little thin tubes so they can sit between the gaps left behind by the parts that we've just glued together. And this is how she's gonna stand on the rock. It'll be a bit of a balancing act later, I bet, but you know, we'll attempt that once it's been painted to avoid any problems. And this is the model now that it's been primed with some Chaos Black spray primer. Just check out the amount of detail that's come out on this print. It is absolutely insane. I do think it's gonna be a hell of a job to try and paint these wings though. But to begin with, I'm just gonna Zenithal highlight it to start off using some white ink in the airbrush. I'm doing this because it's going to help us map out the light bounce on the model to which we can start building our skin tones on top of. So just spring the ink from a high up angle onto the model. The higher up the model, the brighter the light, and this should help us shape out how we're going to add colour to the body. And that's how it's looking once it's been highlighted. You can see how by doing this before you paint it, it picks up on all the highlights and separates them from the shadowed regions of the body. And to begin the body painting, I'm just gonna start off with a layer of this Gilliman, Gulliman, Gilliman, Gilliman Flesh Contrast, and it'll act as a good base skin tone, but because it's a contrast paint, it'll still keep all of the highlights and shadows that we've just built up. With that done, I'm just gonna use some of this Night Quester Flesh, and this will act as the darker tone of the skin. So I'll just load this into the airbrush with some thinner and target the darker areas, which we can see that have been left behind from the ink. Following suit, I'm just moving up through the lighter flesh tone colors and using some Cadian flesh tone. And with that, just targeting the lighter areas next to the darker skin tone that we just applied. The nice thing with using the airbrush to base your model in this way is that you get a nice smooth blend between the colors. Then the last skin tone to apply will be some of this Kiss Left Flesh, and then this will be sprayed over the remaining lightest areas of the body, and we should start to see a pretty cool looking transition between the darker tones all the way to the lighter tones. Then the main part comes, because this is basically the base coat that will sit underneath everything that we do, and we're gonna build up thin layers onto it to really bring out this skin detail. So what I'm doing is I'm loading up all of the previous skin tones that we've just used to a wet palette, and I'm also adding in some of this Cantor Blue, which will sort of create the shadows on the body. So to start off this part, I'm gonna mix some of the Cantor Blue and the Night Quest or Flesh, which is the dark skin tone that we used, to create this kind of dark bluish skin tone tint, and I'll be applying thin down layers of this to the darker regions of the model. You can see why it's so beneficial to do something like Zenithal highlighting beforehand, so you can really map out the highlights as you keep building up layer by layer. So with the dark blue skin tone shadow layer applied, I'm basically gonna follow this method all the way to the lighter tones, which is basically, I'm gonna add a 50-50 mix of this dark tone with the lighter tone, and then add a thin layer of that mix to the lighter areas of the body, then take that mix and make a glaze of it, and I'll use that to blend between the two shades that we've just applied. 
Once that's done, I'm going to take a pure layer of the lighter colour of that same mix and do the same. Then repeat that as you move up through the lighter colours. So you've got darker tone, apply that. 50-50 mix, apply that. Do a glaze of the mix, apply that. Then the lighter colour of the mix, apply that. 50-50 mix, apply, glaze, lighter colour. 50-50 mix, apply, glaze, lighter colour. So on, so on. And you do that following the highlight already established from the airbrush job and you should start to get a pretty cool looking striking skin effect. Then you can just take the lighter colours, mix in some white and just target the really brighter parts to add that extra shine to it. Is she the hardest boss in Elden Ring? I think so. It's between her and Mog. I really struggled against those two so, 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 so much. I sadly fought Radan literally like the morning of when he got nerfed, so that was really disappointing for me. But Melania did not disappoint. I always did pretty well against her until she like did her goblin mode attack and I just panic roll and die instantly, especially in her phase two rot stage. I just could not time those dodges against her. I had phase one down to a T, I could get through that and I can get to phase two completely unhit, but phase two, phew, it's tough. It, 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 is, it, is, it is as tough as people say. I was actually wearing my Fitbit when I was fighting her and I think my heart rate hit 147 by the time I beat her, which is like, you know, bloodborne heart rate levels. And that's how the skin's looking. What do you think? I'm definitely gonna try and stick to this and improve on this technique for skin in the future. Next up, however, is the hair. Now this is some iconic red hair and we'll have to use some pretty vivid colors for it. So onto the wet palette, I'll be slapping on some corn red and then some word bearers red, which will be the base, I reckon, and some rat skin flesh and Mephiston red for the highlights. Then it's just a simple job of covering all the hair and all the strands that stretch out into the wings with some word bearers red. Then to highlight, I'm mixing in some Mephiston red and some of this rat skin flesh and for some extra variation of reds, I'll just be adding in different parts of the corn red here and there. And with the hair done, this is how she's looking. And I think that red is really striking and it definitely will be the focal point of this model. For the limbs, I don't wanna do any non-metallic metal with this because I don't think it'll suit it. So I'm just going to use some thin layers of this Rune Lord brass metallic paint, making sure it's thin so it won't overpower any of the contrast highlighting underneath. Now I'm trying Rune Lord brass. I, I know the prosthetic limbs are gold, but I want to try using this Rune Lord brass just to start with instead of gold, because I want to keep the undercoat a bit dull, and I think gold will just be too overpowering to begin with. So this is a good metallic colour to start with, to which we can add some gold later on to bring some of that royal tone back into the limbs. So this will be applied to all the prosthetic limbs, the sword arm and both the legs. And once that's done, I'm going to add in some of this brighter metallic colour with Canoptic Alloy. And this is a lovely shimmery tone which will sit nicely on the little brighter parts of the metal. So just thinning that out and applying layer by layer onto the brighter parts of the metal just to bring out some of that shine. Then we're going to gold it up to match the colour in the game. And to start, I'll be adding some Retributor armour to the ridges of the metal, which will help separate them from the duller brass colours underneath. Then with some thin down layers of this gold, I'm just going to glaze it over the brass in different areas to bring some of that gold tint through, especially on the outermost parts so that it transitions down into the duller brass tones the further away from the light that it is. Then with the same gold, I'm just going to dry brush it onto these white parts that were sprayed on the sword to create this metallic bounce effect. With some Auric Gold, which is an even brighter and more vibrant gold, I'm just going to dry brush this to the top of the sword and the upper parts to add some more of that brighter metallic vibrancy. Then to finish off the sword, we need to add these shadows in. So I'll dry brush on some Rhinoctide, which works as a really good shadow tone for gold. And that will be just dry brushed over these little parts left in between the gold. And just to blend between the gold and that darker brown that we just added in, I'll just dry brush on some Mournfang Brown, which will just act as the mid-tone between the two. 
Last but not least for the sword, I'm just going to go back through and black line this little sunken part of the blade just to add some contrast and shadow to it. Now for the charred burn marks on her skin, I'm just going to dry brush on some of this Mechanicus standard grey. These parts are raised up from the skin, so dry brushing will be really good for this as it will really only target the raised bits if I'm careful with it. And just to enhance those burns a bit more, I'm just going to go back over it with some black just to give some of those real darker burn shades. Now her wings will be a tricky one. There is a bunch of colour in them, but in like true Souls fashion, they still appear relatively like dulled down, which does help her hair remain the focal point of the model, but it's going to be a bit tricky to keep within the aesthetic of the model. So I just want to start off by dry brushing on some of this Dawnstone dry paint, just to give a bit of brightness to the texture, then enhance that with some long beard grey, and this should act as a good base to start adding in some various colours to. So I don't really have a sort of plan for this, I'm just going to try and wing it. Nice, wing it. I'm just gonna freestyle some colors on, using some of this rat skin flesh to some of the edges, maybe mix in some Cantor blue to different areas and blend between the rat skin flesh, then maybe some darker greens with Lauren Forest and keep blending between these colors and hopefully we can start building up some cool looking color variations. Just going through mixing in some browns, reds, blues, greens, skin tones as well to it and just sort of see what we can come up with. And for freestyling it, you know, it looks kind of cool. And with that, I'm just going to kind of try and replicate what I just did there to the other wing and then to the other sides of each wing as well. Then it's time for the buttery biscuit base and I'm going to keep this one nice and simple so to start I'll just dry brush on some of this Dawnstone again. There's a lot of nice texture to this rock so dry brushing will work a treat on it picking out all these lovely little ridges and divots and same as before I'm just using some of this long beard grey just to enhance the colour that we've just applied to it adding some of these real brighter tones in. Then with a layer brush and some word bearers red to match her hair colour, I'll be detailing in these little strands that seem to be growing from these little flower fungus things on the base. Then I'll just paint these little pods that are on the base with some thin layers of raskin flesh, just to give them a good pop of colour but still keeping that contrast in. To finish the base off, I'm just going to dry brush on some of the red onto the rock around the areas of the red strands. And before attaching the model, I'm just going to go back around the bottom of the base with some black just to tidy it up a bit from all the paint that's sort of landed on it. Now it's time to glue her on. Fits like a glove or a prosthetic limb. So I'm just going to keep her in place while it dries quickly. And that's it! Time to tidy up around her so we can get that lovely, lovely thumbnail shot. There she is, the goddess of rot, ready to f*** your day up. Thumbs up all round. Another job jobbed. Well that about does it gang, I really hope you enjoy this one. It's such a cool model for such a badass boss and hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did, be sure to drop a like on this video. Leave me a comment, tell me I'm a stinky tarnished if you want, whatever takes your fancy. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want to get notified when a new video drops, as I do do new models every week. And as ever friends, thank you for spending your time with me today, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace out gang, and don't you dare go hollow.